Hi, I'm Marty Pettiford with EXP Realty, and today I am here with my preferred lender, Myron Fears from Guaranteed Rate, and we are going to be doing a series on the home loan process and how to apply for a mortgage and some misconceptions that you may or may not know of when it comes to getting a home loan. So I'm so excited to have you here. If any of my clients are watching this video, you've probably heard of Myron, you probably talked to him on the phone, and I just wanted to get him on camera to get some of his expertise to help people who are considering purchasing their home, whether it be their first home, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, it doesn't matter. We are going to get into all of that with this series. So today, Myron, I want you to, you know, let people know, specifically first time home buyers know, what should they expect with the mortgage pre-approval process? Yeah, so again, first, thanks for having me here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys. So one, as far as the pre-approval process, how does it start with first time home buyers? I would say the number one rule is talking to a lender sooner rather than later, because that's where you're gonna figure out a lot of things of how the process should go, and most importantly, where you are at in the right now, where your financial situation. What does that mean? What does pre-approved mean? For me personally, that's gonna start with first your credit. We're gonna take a full application and get your credit report so we can look at your full credit to know where your score is at and what type of debt that you have. Those are the most important things. Now, one of the things I hear quite a bit, I know you've heard it, yeah. is I don't want to get a hard inquiry on my credit report because it's going to stop me from buying a house, which is just a really big misconception. Because when you get an application, for at least from us, uh, from Guaranteed Rate, we're only doing one hard inquiry. And so what that gets us is your full and stringent credit report that has every single thing on there that you've ever had, okay? A lot of people stop. They don't like to do that because of the hard inquiry, but two, they think I already know my credit my credit score, I know what's on my report. Typically that comes with, oh, I know my FICO, it's sometimes I hear, I know my credit karma, Experian, things like that, which is just not really that accurate. Why is that? Because it's a snapshot. It's really a snapshot of your credit report. So they serve a purpose mm -hmm. as far as, hey, did someone open something new in my credit? that I get a late that I didn't know about, they serve that purpose. But as far as you getting a mortgage, it doesn't really correlate that well. Like it'll have some of the same information on there, but typically what I see is the scores are gonna be about 20 to 30% difference wow. than what we see. That's it, a big difference. Exactly, and so when you're talking 20 to 30 points, that's a different loan program, that could be a difference in even getting pre-approved. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I always recommend that Hey, that hard inquiry one is not going to show until typically 45 days after you get it. So you show, you're you already in the process. You may be under contract at that point, but we're not pulling your credit again at that point. So it's almost for me, it's a very, very low risk, high reward, meaning high reward is you actually get pre-approved and can purchase your home compared to waiting and not getting pre-approved. So once we do that, then we like to verify as far as a pre-approval for me is verifying everything along the process. So we knocked out the credit. Second part is looking at your income. Typically underwriters wanna see a two year history of work history. Now in that two year history, now for our first time home buyers, that could be, hey, well, Myron, I'm out of college. I don't have a two year work history or I just started on my job. We will look at anything as far as your schooling to your current job, even if you switch jobs. So let's just say you're just out of college and you start right away at your job, you have an offer letter or something like that. We were able to use that college or that schooling that you had to show that you have been, you've been actively working towards your career. I didn't even know that. Part. Yeah. Wow. So that's just something important. We'll look at the two year history there. We're looking for pay stubs, W2s, just to show some consistency that the mortgage that you're wanting to get, you can afford it consistently. Um, a lot of that stuff, especially I know we do have some self-employed uh, borrowers that are starting their own business. Those are the ones that are a little bit trickier because it's the consistency part. Because underwriters, they're very black and white. They don't get to talk to you up, like they don't get to talk to you at all. They see what they see on paper and that's it. So a lot of the headaches that come with our self-employed borrowers is that are you in a hot streak or is this something that you can maintain? because you don't want to go through a busy time in the summer and then you fall off and then they're looking, underwriters are looking at as, are you going to default on this mortgage or not be able to pay it? 
and neither one of us want that. We don't want them saying, hey, look, I, I'm stuck. So that's our, we'll verify the income, you know, be it W-2, self-employed, Schedule S corporation. We will go through all of that to make sure, hey, you're stable and we can provide a good service. Outside of that, we'll verify your assets. So what does the assets need to consist of? It will consist of your down payment, your closing costs, meaning title fees, setting up your escrow account and things like that, and then your any reserves if need be, okay? So far as verifying the assets, that's usually the easiest part. We'll check out your bank statements or anything like that to make sure you have the assets to cover all of the costs in total or in if we need reserves. So typically bank statements, we will get, if you need a gift from a family member, just depending if you don't have the funds, we will verify that information too. Usually that's the quickest step there. Um, and then with all three of those components together, that is how we get your pre-approval amount. So you know everything's verified already when Marty shows you houses. But then two, we can guarantee that, hey, we're gonna have a smooth closing because that's where you kind of see the headaches of, oh, my closing was so bad. Usually one of those steps up front was skipped or uh, was looked over a little bit. So that's how we, for your peace of mind, my peace of mind, your peace of mind, we can say, hey, look, we verify everything up front. Now the house just needs to appraise, inspections needs to go well, and really your title work you know, comes back on the home and on your person. So that's one of the reasons why agents have their preferred lenders, because if a lender doesn't do all that work up front, that could totally derail the whole process or make it a nightmare of a process. So when I have customers, potential clients asking me, do you have a preferred lender? Absolutely, call Myron. I hardly answer any questions or ask any questions regarding to how much money do you have saved up or how long have you been on, my, on your job because I know that I trust Myron enough that he's going to get all that information up front. And if he tells me they're good, like I know they're good. It's not like, oh, I didn't see that. That never happens. And like I said, working with a good realtor that you can trust to recommend a great lender to get your home under contract and, and closed as smoothly as possible. That's the key to being a first time home buyer. So thanks Myron for coming and joining us today and answering those pertinent questions. If you're interested in getting in contact with Myron, we'll leave his information in the description below along with a link to apply for a loan if, if you're at that step of the home buying process. To get in contact with me, you can follow me on all my social medias, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at Marty Loves Homes. And if you haven't done so already, please like this video and subscribe.